Hey now, welcome to Microsoft Ignite and our session on Surface Hub and new manageability options. I'm Frank Buckholtz, Director of Product Marketing for Microsoft Surface, and joining me today is Yoav Barzilai, Senior Program Manager on our Surface Hub engineering team. Welcome, Yoav. Thanks, Frank. I'm super excited to be here today to talk to you about some of the recent updates and changes coming to Surface Hub, specifically toward device monitoring and management from Teams, M365, and our own Surface team. These updates will enable consistent collaboration from anywhere. Our latest management capabilities now include Teams Admin Center and Teams Room Managed Services. We also have the new Surface Management Portal within Microsoft Endpoint Manager, which provides inventory management and device support. Yeah, no, I love these new additions that are coming to Surface Hub and the management of them. It's something that people have been asking for for quite a while, and we're actually listening and delivering. So you know what? Organizations face a lot of different competing challenges. They need to be able to build a hybrid workplace model that enables communication as well as collaboration, while also ensuring that they're easy to deploy and manage. All of this needs to happen while keeping company data secure. The right technology can help you not only maintain business continuity and employee productivity, but can also help your company grow and innovate. Over the last six months, we've had some incredible announcements and product updates that are changing the way people meet and collaborate in the hybrid workplace. Let's dive into the first significant management capability, Surface Hub's presence within Teams Admin Center. Yeah, I know, I love this new capability. So as we log in to the Teams Admin Center, under Teams Devices, you will see that now we have a new tab for Surface Hubs. This tab lists all the Surface Hubs in my organization that, that are reporting to the Teams Admin Center. I see that I have a total of 31 hubs, nine of them are online, and the rest 22 are offline. If I choose a device, it'll give me some generic details on the device. I have the ability to download the device's logs here instead of going physically to the device and, loading, and, and downloading them to a USB thumb drive. I have the ability to restart the device from here and also refresh the details if I did some changes and want to make sure that they're kicking in. I have a seven day quality look here. I can see how many calls I've had or meetings and I can see how many of them were good or bad. And I see here that the health status of my device is healthy. Let's have a look at what components are reporting to the Teams Admin Center. I can see that the device is connected to the network. That means that the Teams Admin Center agent is reporting to the Teams Admin Center. And I can see that the Teams app is signed in and connected to the device. I can also see here at the Software Health tab that my Teams Admin agent is up to date. I can see that I'm running the latest update of the Windows 10 team operating system and that my Teams app is up to date as well. Let's have a look at the activity we've had over the last couple of days. So over the last 30 days, I have had, as you can see, quite a few meetings with quite a few participants. If I take a look at this meeting from October 1st that had 22 participants and lasted a little over an hour, I see that it, mar it is marked as a poor experience. If we look at this, we can see that for 27 participants, the, the meeting was actually quite good, but for one, it reported as poor. If we look at the participant, we can see at what point any of the participants joined the meeting, whether they're using audio or video or screen sharing. And if we look at Megan, we can see that Megan joined twice, and on one of her sessions, she had some quality issues. If we look at the participant details and go to Megan, we're looking for the poor session. And if I click this, I see all the information that I need to figure out why Megan's experience was poor. I can see that the device was fine. She was running a good operating system on an Android. She was joining her from the Surface Duo 2. She was connected on the Wi-Fi network. And if I look at the quality of the network, I see that at one point, her packet loss was 100%. This is probably why Megan had to drop and then join the call again. You know, so on top of what you just described, Yoav, about Teams Admin Center, we're also offering a new premium managed service for Teams Room. And now that Surface Hub is part of the Teams Room family, we now know that we can manage these devices through these managed services. Let me give you an example of what these new managed services look like. Essentially, there is a dedicated pool of experts that are monitoring these devices, seven by 24, in your environment. 
They provide essentially updated management capabilities so that they're able to keep your devices update and secure at all time. But they also provide real-time monitoring and understanding of the alerts and how to react to that. Through those reactions, they provide proactive remediation, but overall incident management as well, so they can report back to us or you as a company on a regular basis on the health of your entire infrastructure of meeting spaces. So just like Yoav provided a demonstration of Teams Admin Center, let's dive in and take a look at what these new managed services look like. So here we are inside of the Microsoft Managed Rooms area, or now what we're calling Teams Managed Services, or Teams Room Managed Services. And this is a viewpoint of what the experts and those people that are monitoring 7 by 24 would have visibility of. In this case, we actually see that there's an unhealthy room. That's not good, is it, Yoav? Mm -hmm. No. So, uh, and, it, and in fact, it says that the type of room where we're having an unhealthy uh, status is a Surface Hub room. So let's take a dive into that space and actually understand what it is that's causing that problem. And in this case, we see that the problem is something within the hardware and peripherals side. So now I can actually take a little bit deeper dive inside of hardware and peripherals and be able to look that we actually have a pen that is causing a problem. And it says it needs action. And there's a warning status on it. So if we were to actually click on that particular pen and that uh, ticket number that we actually have, we can actually see that we have essentially a battery level of uh, 17. So that's giving us a warning that likely the battery inside the pen needs to be um, taken action. We need to take a action in order for maybe, maybe there's some IT staff that's local in that space that can go around and give them a ticket. And in fact, in this case, we've actually assigned them a ticket on this device in order to be able to show, in this case, it's the CY34JU ticket, which is now able to document that there was a problem and we were able to take a remediated action in order to resolve that. And then at the end of the month, we can see all the different tickets that have been opened and the actions that have been taken against them and even be able to get health status reports of how, up, how much uptime there is across the board for all of our uh, spaces. And so this gives us a unified look at not only this single device, but the health and status of all our devices. So whether you're using tools like what Yoav showed with Teams Admin Center, or being able to use these professional tools that literally allow for an agent to monitor your environment seven by 24, so that when users come in to use things, they get what they expect. So with that, that is the managed services capabilities, and you can talk more to your Surface specialist to learn more how they could implement this or even do a proof of concept of this at your particular location. Now that we've looked at how we monitor and make proactive steps in order to effectively remediate issues, let's look at the core of how we manage settings. This is part of Surface Hub's management philosophy is that through tools like Intune, which are now part of Microsoft Endpoint Manager, we're essentially able to turn the knobs that are inside the Surface Hub through a single pane of glass, and that is the Microsoft Endpoint Manager tool. So Yoav, why don't you show us a little bit of a demonstration on how this actually works? What we've decided to configure today is uh, change the homepage URL to point to our Surface IT Pro blog, right. which is the best place to get Surface IT Pro content if you're looking to know about our latest additions and, and, and new devices. Right. I think you've changed the background as well, right? I have also changed the background to display the new uh, Windows 11 Bloom. And we have also changed the Miracast uh, configuration to require a pen whenever someone tries to wirelessly project. That's a good device. one. That way people that are walking by your room don't post things onto your device. How rude. Well, not only rude, but also secure, because right. this is, if, if we're sitting in a room and there are multiple Surface hubs around us, we don't know which device we're projecting to, and some people may project to the wrong device. Yes. So a pin on that device makes sure that you project only to the right device that you want to. Let's jump in and take a look at it. Yeah, let's go ahead. Now, so let's first see the settings on Microsoft Endpoint Manager. I have here two different configuration profiles. Two, because one is a standard Windows 10 configuration profile, and the other is dedicated for Surface Hubs. So the home page is a standard Windows 10 configuration. If I look here at Properties, and I go to Configuration Settings, uh, it will open the standard Windows 10 configuration, and what I will look for here is Home, because we're changing the home page. And if you look here, you'll see that I've configured the home page URL to point to the Surface IT Pro blog. 
That is all great. And then I will go back and on the Surface Hub settings, uh, which is a dedicated Microsoft Endpoint Manager template just for Surface Hubs, you will see that I um, set the welcome screen background image. I required pin for wireless projection. And that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and see how that is on the device. We'll just want to make sure first that it's propagated to the device and that it's working. Oh, look, it I did. I see that it has succeeded and it's on that device. So let's see what happens when I walk onto the device. So um, we, we, we see that it's propagated and it's now on the device. And if I look back, oh, there you go. Look we have the Windows 11 Bloom. And now let me try to project this device. Remember the default setting of Miracast is that anyone can project to a device. If I hit Windows K here. For connect? Uh, for connect with a K. That's yeah. a special connect for non-native English speakers. We used to put that uh, on our Xboxes, <laughs> but we don't anymore. All right. Uh, and look what it has. It says enter pin. So I will need to enter the pin here. And it's, it's 680 Yes. And I will hit connect. And there it is. Ooh, look at that mirror cast working like a charm. Yes, absolutely perfect. And that means that I can now also have mouse and keyboard touch back. And that means that if I come here and I touch this, I basically control my machine now. So if I want to look at the other settings that I have, I don't need to go back to my computer. I, I control my computer from the hub by touching. So we noticed that the home page settings have propagated. We now see that the settings for the rest of the device oh, are wow. fine. And that's it. So this is how you manage Surface Hubs with Microsoft Endpoint Manager. How about that home page? The home page, we didn't try that, right? Yeah, so let's let look at me that. Uh, the, disconnect. I can disconnect my device from the hub. And then I will minimize this or just pull it down. And I will launch the Edge browser. It will launch the new tab page. But if I hit the home button here, I go to the Surface IT Pro Prologue that is configured in the Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Hey, you know, this is a great place to find out about all the other Ignite sessions that are taking place as well. Yeah. Hey, Frank, I understand we just launched this new Surface Management Portal within Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, no, I'd love to. You know, I've always said that Surface is all about innovation. And innovation really comes not only in amazing form factors like this new laptop studio that you have in front of you, but it also comes with an innovation of how we drive security as well as manageability into our products. It started with how we offer Autopilot as one of our first services where Surface was essentially the one of the first devices to ever be deployed through Autopilot because it was essentially developed on Surface. Then we actually took the part where we said, hey, there is firmware on our Surface devices that we can actually manage through Microsoft Endpoint Manager, and we call that DFCI, or Device Firmware Configuration Interface. We now take it to the next step where we are offering a service or a capability that any Surface device that is enrolled in Intune, it will show up on your device within Microsoft Endpoint Manager in what we are calling the Surface Management Portal, and you'll be able to see things hey, instead of just talking about it, let's dive in and actually give a demonstration live on an actual tenant where we can show it to you. So let's go ahead and jump into this device and take a look. So the next demo I'd like to show is the Surface Management Portal. This is a management portal that will start showing up inside of the services area where you click on all services within Microsoft Endpoint Manager's Admin Center. And if you click on all services, you will now start to see if you have Surface devices that are enrolled via Intune, they'll show up inside the Surface Management Portal. And when you do and you click on this, you'll start to get a little bit of health towards the capabilities and the you know, status that you receive through this amazing new tool. What I really love about this is it also breaks it down by device type. So I can see here I have 79 Pro Xs and 20 Laptop 3 um, on the, my inventory. So I get a nice inventory listing here, but not only within my inventory listing, I also get a degree of information about, say, devices that are not encrypted. So that's probably a compliance issue that I would want to go out and be able to click on those 19 devices and maybe create a security group just for those 19 devices to push an, a policy down through Microsoft Endpoint Manager onto those devices. Then remember, these could be uh, Surface Hubs as well, which is all part of our session here. So Surface Hub will show up in all of these areas as well. So if some of these pieces aren't compliant, you'll get a quick understanding as to why. 
Um, the other piece would be is maybe I have devices that are running short on storage. And so I can click on this and be able to understand um, the, under, the, the ability to see, and maybe I want to push a script to all these devices to um, maybe clean out the cache and clean out the temp files and other pieces on that device in order to um, have it much more available in its storage capacity. Probably not a problem you're gonna have on Surface Hubs because they clean themselves at, literally after every session, um, but know that this is available for, across the entire portfolio of Surface devices, all the way from Surface Duo, an Android device, all the way through Windows 11 and Windows 10, as well as the Team OS, which is part of Windows 10 for Surface Hubs. Now, the other part that is really cool in here is the ability to actually see warranty and coverage information. So here I can actually see the number of devices that have an expired warranty, as well as the number of devices that are covered under warranty as well. And maybe I wanna take a step on the, even the devices that are expiring to be able to understand where they are and the date that they are expiring. And so I'll understand um, how I'm gonna support those going forward. Now, one of my favorite features is the new support portal where I could literally come in here and open up a ticket and maybe um, open up a ticket against a uh, device and be able to log a support ticket. I don't have to sit on the phone with an agent. I can literally click on a serial number and then click on the problem that is it is occurring and then be able to start um, remediating actions right away through the web portal without even having to talk to a single human. That's kind of nice, right? And so I'm able to do all these different capabilities through this amazing new tool. Again, any Surface device that's enrolled through Intune will show up in this new management portal. And by the way, um, we have an entire Surface session in Ignite that Harshita actually has delivered. So look up this Surface management portal and she'll take you through a deep dive of this, as well as we'll actually point out that there is a mechanics video. If you go out to Surface and mechanics, um, there's a mechanics video that Jeremy Chapman actually did about the Surface Management Portal as well. So we hope you take advantage of this inside of MEM. It'll show up automatically starting um, on the 28th of October inside the United States and before the end of the year across the rest of the globe. So what I love about this is that through a single pane of glass, IT admins now have the ability to understand the health and status of all their devices, no matter where they sit across the globe. Right. They can also create automatic actions to address specific events as they occur. For example, we showed actions that can be taken when we noticed the device was offline, or the camera didn't turn on, or that the pen battery is low. All of this is designed to reduce IT complexity, and in the end, provide a seamless experience to ensure employee productivity in the hybrid workplace. Yeah, that's super important because we wanna be able to essentially allow employees to get to work, but also provide a level of security and management where people have full scope understanding of the health of the devices in their space. Yeah. So to learn more about these amazing features, be sure to check out our other sessions here at Microsoft Ignite that we have listed on our Surface IT Pro blog. Well, that about wraps it up. Thank you for joining us as we demonstrated how Microsoft Surface and M365 are making it easier for IT pros to manage and deploy their devices securely. We hope you get a chance to check out the other sessions and on-demand content to learn more about all these exciting things coming from Microsoft Surface. And be sure to tune in on November 11 to Microsoft Tech Community Live, where many of our Surface subject matter experts, as well as Frank and I, We'll be joining live to show off the latest devices and answer your questions. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks. Goodbye.